Today is Thursday, the 27th of June, and welcome to our morning devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we read again from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Brothers, join in imitating me, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many, of whom I have often told you, and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. St. Paul considers the enemies of the cross of Christ to be those who are opposed to the doctrine that a person becomes just before God and is saved, not by the law and his works, but through faith in the crucified Christ. These enemies of the cross have not in any way died out in our day. Indeed, they do not merely creep around here and there seeking to lead believing congregations astray. No, they have even come to power in the very midst of Christendom. What is the doctrine that now resounds from most so-called Protestant pulpits? Without shame, most preachers now teach and their hearers gladly hear that Christ is not the true God, eternally equal with the Father and Almighty, but rather a Son of God, like all good people, only more enlightened, wiser, and godlier. Christ's death, they say, was only a martyr's death, a death for the sealing of the truth of his doctrine. Therefore, these preachers maintain a person does not become clean by the blood of Christ. He is not reconciled by Christ's death, and Christ has not atoned for his sins by his suffering and death. Salvation, they say, does not depend on the faith of a person, but on his virtue, his upright mind, his good works, and his blameless life. By this alone, they claim, a person can make himself pleasing to God and just before him. He thus makes himself worthy of salvation and gains a claim on heaven. Thousands of preachers who call themselves Christians, Protestant, evangelical, teach this. Such preachers may hypocritically praise Christ and demand that people imitate his glorious example. However, they are nothing but enemies of the cross of Christ. Those who all too clearly preserve and support the godless world by their unbelief, by their contempt of God and his word, and by their earthly mind, are manifest enemies of the cross of Christ. But their animosity is so overt that no believing Christian is led astray. They are, however, more subtle enemies of the cross who present a better appearance. They teach that Christ is God's only begotten Son that he died a substitutionary death of atonement, and that a person becomes just before God through faith and not by works. But they proceed to deny grace and salvation to all who receive this doctrine at face value, without any personal claim of worthiness, an exclusive reliance upon the word of the gospel that is sealed to them by baptism and holy communion. They do this by continually preaching about repentance, conversion, being born again, and sanctification. But they do not have mercy on the poor sinner, and they do not want to give any comfort to those who can say nothing of themselves, but that they are poor, lost sinners. They do this by describing the faith and justification and pardon of a person in such a way that the gospel appears to show a person how he himself must earn grace and climb to heaven under an unbearable yoke. They do this by calling the Savior a hard man and a Moses with thunder and lightning 
They portray him as ruling over his own with an iron scepter. The preachers of these severe doctrines are the most dangerous enemies of Christ and his holy cross. They terrify sinners and keep them from Christ. Without saying it, they teach that Christians must build their state of grace and their salvation upon their own works. They drive the sheep of the Good Shepherd away from the sweet pasture of the life-giving gospel and into the desert sand of the law. They are thus guilty of causing thousands to go astray and to seek grace without ever finding it. And so we pray. Preserve, O Lord, thine honor, the bold blasphemer smite, convince, convert, enlighten the souls in error's night. Reveal thy will, dear Savior, to all who dwell below, thou light of all the living, that men thy name may know. Amen. And we pray, Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.